so thank you uh, thank you all for uh, uh, allowing me to talk in the advances in ophthalmology series as an international expert lecture i chose the topic a to z in diabetic retinopathy to prevent blindness so the uh, we all know that diabetes mellitus is now considered as the epidemic of the 21st century and diabetic retinopathy is a major cause of blindness in the working middle-aged adult population and fifth cause of blindness globally and uh, I think the IDF 2017, as mentioned, diabetes more than 18 years is 415 million. Impact glucose tolerance is 318 million. And Southeast Asia, 78.3 million. This is 2017. But I know today in India, we have 103 million as published recently by the group from Madras uh, Diabetic Research uh, Association. And the epidemiological studies have shown that one in three persons with diabetes mellitus have diabetic retinopathy, and one in 10 have sight threatening diabetic retinopathy. And again, as per the International Diabetic Federation. And this is a global prevalence of people with their diabetes and diabetic retinopathy, but from the IAPB Vision Atlas. And this is the uh, their projection for 2045 and the diabetes prevalence in 20 to 79 years old in 2021 was estimated to be 10.5 percent that is 536.6 million and rising to 12.2 and uh, 783 million in 2045 but i think uh, as i speak this uh, uh, numbers are changing that is because of the projection but nevertheless we are here and india is set to emerge as the diabetic capital of the world, which is not a good news for us. But unfortunately, we have to be aware, we only have 25,000 ophthalmologists and about 1,500 veterinary specialists. But uh, that, that's my dream now in India, What, how to tackle this. 31.7 million people were affected by diabetes in India in the year 2000. And this figure is estimated to ri rise to 79.4 million by 2030. All these uh, projections are now going wrong. And already we have 77 million diabetic recently, and then they are saying it's going to be 103. So I think these numbers, whatever uh, are shown is from various publications, and it's uh, showing this, this is from uh, uh, the Sun et al, where estimated 966 billion and, uh, in the US in 2021, and are projected to reach 1,054 billion in the US by 2045. And the risk of comorbidities increasing further in patients with diabetes. Now, this is what I like to show this to the patients from the diabetes can produce a cerebral vascular accident, diabetic retinopathy producing blindness, cardiovascular disease producing heart attacks and ischemic heart disease, and uh, diabetes nephropathy leading to renal failure, dyslipidemia, diabetic neuropathy. And uh, I think compared with healthy control cohort, a larger population of patients with diabetic macroedema are overweight or obese, and 31% have hypertension and have cardiovascular disease. Compared with patients with diabetes without ocular complication, patients with diabetic macular edema and or diabetic retinopathy have a greater risk of stroke and myocardial infarction. And this is what I think I, we always say that eye is a window of the body. And there's a book of retina, uh, renal uh, uh, connections in the diabetes. So I think uh, we have to be a physician uh, as a, a first and then uh, an ophthalmologist and then a retina person like me. The principal fears of the person with diabetes is uh, blindness and the kidney problems and self-treated uh, hypoglycemia. And then I think this is, a, again, a publication from Diabetic Metabol um, Medicine. And this is what I think every individual should ask when they are being diagnosed with diabetes. Can diabetes make me blind? And I think and the answer is yes, but how do we prevent it? And loss of vision is the most feared complication of diabetes. It is only, I feel, the ophthalmologists and optometrists are, are worried about the patient going blind, but the patient themselves do not know. Feelings about complication and diagnosis, 63% knew these health problems might affect them in future, but risks seemed remote. 25% devastated, they might develop complication. 9% were really not concerned, and 3% none of these. And uh, this is the complication patients were most concerned about problems with vision loss, heart failure or cardiac disease, kidney or 11%, 10% circulation problem, 9% problems with feet and other. So I think our ophthalmologist can be a, a, a important person in the life of a diabetic patient. And this is again, 
the other uh, statistics in 2016 and which are so this is again also the recent one but I, as i said the latest one is uh, 103 million in in diabetes which is projected uh, statistics and diabetes is an epidemic and every diabetic is affected with some problem or other. And I always tell this, diabetes, once diagnosed, it goes to the with you to the grave. And ocular symptoms are too late. And because it's uh, symptomless in the beginning, they don't actually care for the eyes. And prevention is better than cure. So we recommend, and I think uh, every ophthalmic society in the world are doing that, primary checkup at the time of diagnosing every person, even though in the beginning they said that after diagnosing diabetes, particularly in India, we recommend this because nobody knows when they have uh, got diabetes. So I recommend that we should do a postprandial sugar, HB1AC, fasting sugar every year from the age of 35 because of the stress, obesity, wrong food, uh, no exercise. And I think we have to be uh, 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 fit. And I think this is what I'm trying to convey by an example. So I say that we, even at this age, I'm uh, going to the gym an hour a day and then do exercise because it's important to be active and prevention is better than cure. So coming, if you develop a diabetic uh, uh, problem, what do we do? So I think uh, the uh, main thing is uh, since I'm a vitriol surgeon, but still I thought when I, I chose the topic of the A to Z, we have to know when a patient may need a laser, a focal laser, even though laser seems to be going outdated, but still has a role in eyes like this, where you don't have to give injection because if you do a laser, a focal laser to the leaking microaneurysm, you can probably treat the patient and maybe they may not need anything if they keep controlling their diabetes, hypertension, and the associated conditions like dyslipidemia. And then if you develop a, pan, uh, a neovascular uh, uh, disease like this, where there's a severe proliferation of neovascularization of the optic disc and neovascularization superiorly, you see this net. And fortunately, uh, we, you don't have to see this, but I think in India, we're still seeing, if you do a pandrachal photocoagulation like this, they are uh, treating the uh, all around the eye except the disc and macula. Most of the patients can be prevented from going into the next complication. And then if you have the macular edema, diabetic macular edema, you need uh, antivascular endoscopic growth injections like uh, we have the many. An intravitreal injection is a highly targeted drug therapy. It involves uh, injecting the uh, various uh, uh, antivirus which is available like the, uh, the originally it was started with the, the macogen, the pecaptip sodium, later bevacizumab, ranizumab, aflibrisib, and also, sometimes they had the intravitreal steroids uh, like the tramsulone uh, acetate and the steroid implants. Now we have the uh, Ozirdex and Plosilone uh, uh, in, implant. So in case, in, in spite of all that, if the patient uh, doesn't uh, get the treatment and they go to the next stage and they may need vitreous surgery. So the indications for uh, vitrectomy, non-clearing uh, vitreous hemorrhage, and these patients we investigate by doing ultrasonography to see the position. If it is uh, only one eye, you investigate the other eye with the fundus fluorescent angiography, OCT, and OCT angio in case you, you can't do a fundus fluorescent angiography. And the eye with the hemorrhage, you do a sonography to study the position of retina. And if there's no traction, you can wait for a few days because the other eye is all right. But if it is a bilateral, we like to go in, even if the retina is attached and there's no other traction, but we like to go at least one eye early. And nowadays with the uh, small gauge, like in, either it's 25 or 27 gauge, you can do a vitrectomy and panretinal photocoagulation. And uh, the later stage where your patient come with a combined traction and retinal regmatogenous retinal detachment, you can see the configuration. You have fibrovascular proliferation, which is contracting. And then later, the uh, probably it pulls and then produces a small break because of the uh, severe traction and then produces a the effect of both traction and regmatogenous retinal detachment. And the other is a taut posterior hyaloid. You see the fundus photograph and the uh, OCT, which shows the when these sort of patients will have distorted vision. And, and, and uh, routinely, both for age-related macular degeneration, above the age of 50, we recommend them to do a home ampsler. That means they can use the ampsler chart. At least they know some distortion happening. They should go to an ophthalmologist to check 
and the ophthalmologist can decide to do the fundus photo CT and not a veterinary surgeon, refer to a veterinary surgeon after getting the investigations done. And sometimes we get patients like this with a, a rubiosis iridis and which is hemorrhage, and then a, with a neovascular iris and neovascular glaucoma. And if there is a perception of light, and if it is a uh, just started a neovascular glaucoma like this with a florid, uh, you can give anti uh, intracameral uh, uh, the anti VEGF and then uh, uh, wait for a day or two to for the uh, things to clear and then you can proceed with the vitreous surgery and also can give conclusion and anti VEGF so that when do a extensive panretinal photocoagulation so that uh, you can save the eye because many times they come with no perception of light and you can't do anything. So sometimes they can also go in for painful blind eye. I think uh, I remember 35 years back uh, when we started, I have seen severe painful blind eye and we have to give the retrobulb or alcohol injection to avoid pain. Fortunately, because of some awareness created all over, at least the patient comes with a, even with a proliferative retinopathy and nowadays with the anti of treatment, these sort of uh, things can be prevented. And then I have some examples of uh, vitreoretinal surgery for diabetic retinopathy. Here you have a 48-year-old male with a sudden diminution of vision in both eyes since two days. Maybe one eye had a vitreous hemorrhage and he didn't notice. And then the other eye I had probably then he said both eyes simultaneously. He's a diabetic only since 11 years on insulin on poor glycemic control. That means he's detected diabetes 11 years ago, but he may have, would have had diabetes a uh, few years earlier too. His vision in both eyes and from counting fingers a half meter. Hence, I now have a, a specific diabetic uh, form and we are doing a, a, a basic science research with the Case Western University where, where we also check with the questionnaire when was the diagno diabetes diagnosed and when was the first time the retina examination done. And also we are trying to find by investigating the patient a biomarker because some patients with severe diabetes uh, do not develop complications like this. And some with the irregular, with good control still have problem. So this patient on examination had vitreous hemorrhage with diabetic traction retinal detachment in both eyes, right eye, we did a vitrectomy, right eye followed by left eye. And uh, uh, you can see I'm using the 23 gauge and uh, uh, you know, three port pass plan vitrectomy. The infusion line is in a position and I made this three port and then going inside. And I, I nowadays use uh, 3D, uh, which is surgery. I use the, I don't have any financial interest, but uh, I use the Zeiss RTO. I'd also use the Alcon uh, uh, system. And I think uh, for the, uh, administration gave me this uh, Zeiss and you can see the fibrous proliferation produce, uh, going into the anteriorly and now I'm actually uh, severing the connection with anterior posteriorly and I'm dithermosing the fibrous proliferation before uh, using the vitreous cutter to cut but in spite of that you can see the uh, there's a, a bleeding happening and uh, you have to again uh, diathermize and I'm trimming the fibrous proliferation, which is arising from the optic, uh, 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 the fibrous tissue arising from the optic region. You can imagine this patient has never undergone a, a examination earlier and no laser has been done. And that's why it's, a, and there was a, fortunately some PVD. So the PVD induction was not required. And I cleared the pre-retinal hemorrhage using the retinal brush and also release all the anthropos traction and uh, diathermize the stop so that it does not bleed now on the table as well as post-operatively. And then uh, uh, some pre retinal hemorrhages are there in the periphery, which is also I'm clearing using the retinal brush. In the retinal brush, you can suck and also push it back uh, so that uh, you can dislodge that uh, clot, which is on the surface of retina. So, and then do a pan retinal photocoagulation maybe 1,500 to 2,000 shots uh, mm -hmm. so that uh, you, you, you don't leave any area left because this is what has given rise to the neovascularization and then the neovascularization optic disc has given rise to the uh, vitreous hemorrhage. And now mm -hmm. I'm using the fluid air exchange and I leave the eye with a non-expansial gas mixture and remove the uh, ports. And many times I, I don't have to do a suturing but you can see the eye is filled with the gas so using i use the 
uh, wide angle system, either the size of the biome, the uh, and then I, I make sure that the, the, the thing is close and you can see this is a second patient and that patient improved to 618. And if this is the preoperative retinal photograph with the fibrocellular proliferation producing traction on the MAC lab with a two meter vision. And then uh, I'm using the uh, 25 gauge uh, three port pass plane vitrectomy. So I again have the infusion line. So you can see my bevelled entry. And this is what I do go first parallel to the sclera and then go into the eye so that when you remove, you don't have to suture them because the clear flaps will get tightened when you do a fluid air exchange. You can see some laser has been done. There is a fibrovascular uh, uh, proliferation, and uh, and I actually I'm using a, a technique called uh, um, uh, the proportional mode from the vitrectomy machine. I use the constellation again, uh, no financial interest. So I push the fluid between the membrane and the retina to make a cleavage so that uh, you only using the uh, vitreous cutter. I'm trying to complete the surgery, and I do. By manual vitreous surgery, I do uh, uh, the like this uh, using the cutter or the force of scissors, delamination, depending on each case. So I think this is what I recommend that uh, to the veterinal surgeons that uh, you should do the surgery and the techniques depending on. You cannot have a, a specific uh, uh, algorithm. It will depend on the patient to patient. In this case, I did the proportional mode clearing this uh, fibrous proliferation spread across the optic disc and the uh, posterior pole and clearing the simultaneously the preretinal hemorrhage. <clears throat> and uh, you need to do a meticulous job. The advantage of using the proportional mode is a fluid which is pushing between the membrane and the retina. The atrogenic complications are almost nil. You can see now that uh, when the fluid is uh, pushed, there is some blood clots which are moving. So the idea is to clear as much as possible. And you can see uh, uh, intermittently preretinal hemorrhages keep happening. And I keep uh, removing using the retinal brush. And now I'm under the laser air. I'm doing the laser. And because of the repeated uh, hemorrhage, the view is hazy. And it's better to complete the panretinal photocoagulation and then uh, uh, get out so that uh, and so you can see the patient is a fakey guy. And this is how the eye looks at the conclusion. There is an optic disc pallor. That's why I am aware of this. And I keep the uh, intraocular pressure at uh, 20 uh, pressure. And uh, I keep doing the vitrectomy. And you can see as the vision improved to 6, 9. And uh, that's the and, uh, the, 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 and and I tell the patient to continue for follow-up. This is a pa patient 3 where a 49-year-old female with history of diabetes since 20 years. She was diagnosed to have a combined retinal detachment and cataract. So she underwent fake emulsification with 25-gate vitrectomy with the intraocular lens. And I am I don't do cataract surgery at all. So I asked my colleague, Dr. Kavita Rao, who does the cataract surgery. Uh, here it is like a dense cataract. She is uh, uh, making the capsular rexis and uh, do and then also staining using the brilliant blue and uh, do and, and then she will do the FACO. The, uh, the I usually tell the um, cataract surgeon to finish the FACO, do the intraocular lens and get out so that I can take over and go ahead and complete uh, the surgery. The reason is uh, I, I know there are many vitreal surgeons all over the world who do both cataract and vitrectomy. And I feel uh, we have uh, the thousands of cataract surgeons in India and uh, very few vitreal surgeons. And even though it's increasing, but I'm concentrating and do only vitreal surgery for the last almost uh, 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy there to be trained in Shankar by my mentor, Dr. Bodhinath, and seen right from Dr. Makama to uh, all the stalwarts in retina and learning. Even today, I keep learning. I keep visiting various uh, surgical uh, rooms to learn some newer techniques. The idea is uh, we should give the best to the patients. Uh, and that's my idea. So they just saw the intraocular lens have been put. Corneal hydration is being done. Now I take over. And now this is actually a 23 gauge uh, three port pass plane vitrectomy I'm uh, doing. And uh, so you will be shortly seeing, I do, uh, which is a uh, remove the vitrec uh, vitreous hemorrhage by doing three port pass plane vitrectomy, remove the anterior posterior traction, and then you identify the fibrovascular proliferation. So the main thing is you have to be meticulous and also 
quick, but not in a hurry. The idea is time is important because more you are infusing something and putting something on the cornea, there can be a hazy and that can hinder the visualization. So I have to be careful. So I, I tell my fellows or the nurse only to put a corneal, uh, the viscous elastic so on the cornea so there's no, uh, this, I'm now diathermizing the fibrous proliferation, which is producing the uh, regmatogenous uh, element, but luckily localized nasal to the optic disc, the macula is all right. So I'm actually trying to release the traction on the fibrovascular uh, uh, proliferation between the optic disc and the break. The idea is uh, uh, so that uh, the traction is not there and still some bleeding happened and the bleeding went into the uh, retinal hole and I'm using the vitreous cutter using only the suction mode and removing of the vitreous cutter. This is not a good idea to have bleeding, but uh, in spite of diathermy, you saw the diathermy be done, bleeding happens and you can raise the bottle height. But as I told, you have to be careful because optic disc can become uh, pale. So I keep it for less than a minute and then again do repeated diathermy, clear the pre retinal hemorrhage using the retinal brush or a mild suction using the vitrectomy uh, probe. And you can see, uh, again, I'm diathermizing the edges of the hole because I know when I do fluid air exchange, the hole becomes small and many times can't locate the break. And that's the reason I do a diathermy around the break. Now I'm clearing the pre retinal hemorrhage over the macula, over the disc, and the macula is flat. And I'm released almost all the traction. And then uh, I have also diathermized the fibrovascular area around the two breaks, which was pre-existing. Fortunately, no hydrogenic uh, uh, breaks or a problem. So I'm again now using the retinal brush uh, to clear the pre-retinal hemorrhage and all this after the uh, cataract and the implant are done. And, uh, and I, now you'll see that I'm doing endodrainage through the pre-existing retinal break. Uh, still, there's a fibrovascular proliferation, which is uh, uh, there. So uh, I try to trim using the uh, minimal suction and uh, release uh, as much as possible. And uh, so most of the fibrous uh, band, which is connected to the break, is uh, already released. So again, there's some uh, oozing, which I'm clearing. So I have done under magnification, you see the optic disc and the temporal to the uh, optic disc. So I'm using a drop of uh, perfluorocarbon liquid to take, keep the optic disc and the retina uh, close to the break in position. And I'll do a fluid air exchange to check the uh, fibrous tissue and there is some traction. So I'm using the vitreous forceps, uh, the, the PSL pushing the retina and then uh, removing the attachment so that there's no residual traction between the optic disc and the break, which will not open up postoperatively. Otherwise, there's a possibility that the retina can contract and remove, open the break and produce a recommendogenous retinal detachment. So now mm -hmm. I, I released all the fibrous tissue and then uh, I'm now doing uh, endodrainage using the rational brush. And then simultaneously, I will do endodrainage and the fluid air exchange and the PFCL keeping the, uh, the retina between the optic disc and the break mm -hmm. in position. The idea is to have flat retina. And then finally, I'll remove the uh, PFCL and the eye is filled with the air. And under air, I'll complete the laser around the break and pan retinal photocoagulation. And then uh, you can, uh, because there's no traction, you can leave the eye with a non expansional mixture of, uh, I use C3F8 in this eye. The reason is to, I wanted a longer term tamponade, but uh, no need for a uh, uh, expansile uh, concentration. So you can see now uh, the, I'll uh, do the laser under air and meticulous laser to make sure it's uh, away from the optic disc and then complete the panatal photocoagulation. And uh, so the cataract surgery wound also has to be uh, kept well so that it doesn't leak, doesn't produce hypertony. And this is how the entire uh, panatal photocoagulation is being done. Uh, so, and again, sometimes if you wait, there'll be some fluid accumulating. I'm doing uh, endodrainage over the disc, over the break to do the last part and complete the 
panel photocoagulation. So you can see the gas in the eye and the cataract surgeon had put a one suture and then the follow-up, uh, the gas will get absorbed and if required, you can do. And this is a, a twin light, which was designed by Dr. Klaus Eckhart in the 90s. And there's a old video, maybe in 93, where I used this uh, twin light pipe. There's a stiletto, which makes the, uh, it's like a chandelier illumination with two ports. And now the same thing I do with a, a small uh, endo illuminator, we can put two. Uh, simultaneously, but this is an old uh, dark instrument, and I don't think dark is also making it now. But you can use a single uh, light pipe like this and make put two or three where you want and do a bimanual, which is surgery. So, again, uh, this is a, as I said, it's the 90s. So, you see, I'm using the forceps in one hand and I'm using the curved scissors. Uh, and then uh, dissecting the fibrovascular proliferation over the optic disc and the macula. And I think I'll do it, uh, um, uh, make sure that the entire uh, membrane is removed. You saw a technique of uh, fibrous, uh, the proportional mode. And then uh, you, you saw that uh, other one using the cutter. And now I'm using the forceps and scissors for delamination and uh, segmented. Right now I'm doing delamination the technique desire described by Steve Charles and uh, and then uh, the segmentation and there's other technique designed by Dr. Thomas Auber called the end block dissection where you remove the whole thing. Uh, uh, here I'm segmenting into small parts and then removing. And uh, again, there's a who's happening. You can't use a preoperative anti because it can contract and produce severe traction dental detachment. We can make the eye operable eye to an inoperable stage. So better to be careful when you have fibrovascular proliferation, you have to avoid antivascular endothelial growth factor in the preparatory. And uh, you'll be seeing that uh, I'm uh, removing the membrane. Uh, So it is exactly like uh, doing a general surgery where you have the uh, two of the twin light illuminating the entire vitreous cavity and you can use the forceps in one hand and ca catch with the scissors and remove all the traction. So you're almost removing all the membrane and you'll see now the entire membrane is removed and then you do a panatal coagulation and do uh, the uh, and use the gas because there's no atrogenic break or uh, traction lateral detachment. So you can leave the eye with the gas. I, I use silicon oil in some eyes, but not every time. It again depends on the position of the retina or uh, traction or the uh, PVR. So here you see the last part of the membrane being removed. And then a similar surgery there in the second. So I'm skipping that. So the favorable preoperative prognostic factors, short duration of macular detachment, a limited extent of detachment, presence of preoperative panatal photocoagulation, which is a problem in India, but now it's better, absence of vitreous hemorrhage. And uh, the visual acuity of 5 by 200 are better, absence of rubiosis, absence of retinal detachment involving macula. But we see all sorts now. And uh, unfavorable are macular detachment, combined retinal detachment, and as I mentioned, I use the Zeiss RTO, the first digital microscope. And recently I used in uh, Thessaloniki the new Bosch and Lom. I don't know whether it's, uh, it's not available still. It's in the process of getting commercial where they made a C loop so you can see through the center so that you don't have to see the side, which I'll be showing. The advantage of using this uh, uh, digital microscope is uh, uh, it has the digital assistant. You can have OCT if you want. And then uh, this is... Uh, 
and it's a rev revolutionary technology to change the way a surgeon performs vitreal surgery, benefits both surgeon and the patient, and can be a widely accepted platform in the future, not as of today because the, it adds to the cost. Many surgeons still feel what do they have to do a 3D surgery? But according to me, it becomes more meticulous. For example, two layers of paper can be seen uh, very precisely in a big screen. It's like seeing a 70mm movie. Similarly, now I, I watch the screen and operate. And uh, and still, I think it's feel good. Posture is a, a problem in the regular surgery. They say, but you have to see, turn the uh, face you will be seeing. And uh, but that's why they claim this, but are more than the musculoskeletal pain and ergonomic thing. The main thing is you see this uh, tissue better and then you can also have less illumination and still see better and you can record well. And the computer process, the input and output signals, a high definition display unit is there and use the 3D glass. And there's one more company coming with the no glass 3D and you can still do a 3D surgery. And the advantages are improved ergonomics, digitally enhanced visualization, dynamic contrast, good adaptability. It's a almost real-time responsiveness and it's an advanced teaching tool because when you're seeing in the 70 mm screen, whatever you're doing, the, everybody can watch. And I remember asking a surgeon and uh, I won't tell the name, but he said, I don't want a 3D because everybody can see what is happening in the uh, table, maybe a complication. So this is how you add the 3D and watch the big screen and operate. And then, uh, yeah, but the only thing is the anesthetist, the uh, nurse, the any the fellow, the student, anybody. I mean, anybody can watch and everybody can appreciate what you are uh, doing. And uh, the the other uh, uh, so far you saw the complicated uh, vitreoretinal procedures for managing uh, uh, medical the uh, diabetic retinopathy, both uh, medically laser and all that. But my uh, feeling for India, as I mentioned, we have 100 million diabetic. How do we do? I think telewave ophthalmology is an answer where it enables doctor at one end to communicate with patient at remote and through video conferencing. It's picking up and we fortunately have a tele ophthalmic society of India. And so happened, I'm the president of that. We have Shankaranitralia uh, people, uh, Arvind on that and where we are trying to promote teleophthalmology. So I made, as a president of All India Ophthalmic Society, a program called Stop Blindness, screening through teleophthalmology to prevent diabetic retinopathy. So he's a former president. He said the word diabetes acronym is uh, diabetes invariably affects both eyes, test your eyes soon. And one of the diabetologists said, diabetes is, can be made as die in bits. And I say, if you control, you can live well and be normal. And this is a public interest video, which we made when I was a president. The president of Volunteer India Ophthalmic Society, I would like to thank the International Advertising Agency for starting this uh, competition for uh, making a campaign on preventing diabetic blindness. And I also like to thank Alargan for the generous support to make this uh, public initiative movie to create awareness on diabetic retinopathy and how to prevent diabetic blindness. So this is that screening through teleophthalmology. And this is what I want poster in every doctor's screening. world will forgive you but will you forgive yourself diabetic blindness is preventable if you're diabetic you need a retina checkup to prevent vision loss so this was made as a public service initiative and showed in televisions and now i'm again working with another uh, uh, person because uh, this was uh, many number of times we have Andrea Gasse and 
Vijay Amrishra, the, te, the tennis players, who, you know, he released them in the International Advertising Association conference. And uh, as, a, as I said, I'm doing many uh, moves to prevent uh, diabetes problem. So many times people say, if you prevent diabetes, then what will you do for our, whatever we do, there's going to be patients and uh, we have 1.4 billion here and another 1.4 in China. We manage the, we, we, we are almost half of the world. So this is the uh, various camps we do because uh, all over, uh, do, this is being done in November during the World Diabetes Day, which is on November 14th, which is uh, happens to be the Banting's birthday when he introduced insulin on uh, November 14th. So this is uh, done in uh, Maharashtra, Chennai, Bangalore, uh, uh, various parts of the city and uh, various types of uh, uh, screenings are being done and uh, radio programs, television, but still not enough. So the primary prevention uh, role of primary care physician is a challenge in India. I don't know about the rest of the world. Effective screening program for diabetic retinopathy, we keep telling, determine who needs to be referred to an ophthalmologist for close follow-up and possible treatment. So we are not tired, and I keep working with the diabetic associations, diabetologists, nephrologists, the general physicians, and um, even physicians, to say that if you see a diabetic, please refer to for eye checkup. But I actually tell the patients that a uh, head to foot diabetes can affect, get your uh, exam done. So I made this uh, as a five point program for all India, where every citizen, citizen deserves eye checkup. And I'm happy to see IAPB was celebrating in the World Side Day that every, every individual should check their eyes. So, they, so I made a lot of programs from 2005 Professor Calvin Pang knows my school classmate and medical school classmate, Professor Kumar Manikwell. He worked with Shankar Netralia and, he, and then he came along with uh, Dr. Rajiv Raman and initiated a, a program. And we have done uh, a lots in uh, Dharavi, which uh, Dr. Calvin Pang said. And this is again a prevalence uh, incidence of visual impairment patients with proliferative diabetic retinopathy India with the Veterinary Society of India and then need for vitreous surgeries in proliferative diabetic retinopathy in 10 year follow up a diabetic, diabetic ret retinal disease study group number two. And this is an intravitreal triumphs alone and diagnosis diagnostic enigmas of uh, retinopathy. And there are a lot of uh, uh, basic uh, research is going on. And the key points, diabetic retinopathy is characterized by vascular abnormalities, inflammation, neurodegeneration, growth factors, including new inter interleukins play a role in neovascularization and the development of diabetic retinopathy. Elevated levels of interleukin uh, one, uh, one beta, there is IL-1B beta and interleukin-10. IL-10 have been found in patients with PDR. Inflammation and oxidative stress contribute to pathogenesis of diabetic retinopathy. Hypertension is the leading cause of retinopathy and is associated with systemic morbidity and mor mortality. And the resistance of orbital arteries is being studied as a potential marker of hypertensive retinopathy. And early detection and management of diabetic retinopathy and hypertension are crucial in preventing vision loss and further complications. And this is an evidence-based review of diabetic macular edema management, consistent uh, treatment on Indian treatment uh, guidelines on VEGF, and we also have several biosimilars uh, uh, come to India. And uh, we have, for, fortunately, the Vitreatal Society of India, for which I am a founding member and was the past president. And I'm happy they are working continuously to prevent diabetic blindness. And a case report on two diabetic donor eyes with no retinopathy, clinical pathological and molecular studies. And uh, the logistics of DR screening emphasizes the need for dynamic referral pathways with feedback mechanism. It's a big challenge in India. It provides the clinical standard required for diabetic retinopathy screening and treatment of site threatening diabetic retinopathy and addresses the governance and quality assurance standards for diabetic retinopathy screening in Indian setting. And other aspects incorporate education and training recommendations on information and technology and the infrastructure, potential use of AI for grading data capture and requirements for maintenance of a DR registry. Finally, the recommendations include public awareness and the need to work with diabetologists to contain the risk factors so as to have long-term impact of prevention of diabetic blindness in India. 
and we have a uh, under Aditya Youth Hospital clinical research projects on various things uh, in the uh, diabetes, and uh, we also worked with uh, several companies. And this is a, a program which Professor Kumar Manikwal helped me to initiate, called the Aditya Youth Diabetic Retinopathy Urban Mumbai. Uh, study, which were uh, uh, funded by World Diabetes Foundation and so the Dorabji Tata Trust, which has focused on awareness on diabetes and early detection and treatment of diabetic retinopathy. And we also made this uh, mobile motorbike-based diabetic retinopathy screening, which I will uh, say. And we also doing, uh, this is the research we are doing with uh, Case Western University. I'm sure Professor okay. Kalif Pang will know Professor Sudhayangar, who's also a I think a population geneticist from Case Western University. We are working on beyond poverty, drivers of heterogeneity and risk severity of diabetic retinopathy. And the objective is we propose to thoroughly examine epidemiologic risk factors, then examine genetic risk for diabetic retinopathy and examine the role of co-varieties via polygenic risk flows. And the study leverages a high-risk Indian population from the sums of Mumbai, Maharashtra to examine unique and common factors that cause diabetic retinopathy with goal of identifying and clinically uh, actionable influences. And we are also working with the government of India called the BIRAC, Biotechnology Industry Research Assistant Council to establish a clinical trial network in ophthalmology. We have mainly, we can see the various diseases, including diabetic retinopathy, and uh, you see in this one, in the few months, we had a, a diabetic retinopathy included in that. And we have made a foundation called as uh, Professor Kelvin Pan came and gave us an oration uh, on the, which was named as Aditya Jyot Foundation. And now it's named after my parents called Kamala Sundara Foundation. And that's my parents who are late now. Uh, they are no more. And we have the idea is to give a, a provide quality eye care to all those in need through a system based on community participation and commitment. And you can see our social workers. We have we have operate all the equipments in the slum thanks to the donors. Uh, the and then this is where we these are the current trustees. And uh, this is the same thing which uh, 2005 six. Professor Kumar Manikwell and uh, Professor Rajiv Raman came and initiated it, and we are continuing to do that. Thankful to my co-trustees, uh, Professor Uday Salunke, running a management school, Mr. Sulaba managing a, a special school, and Mr. Vaidhanathan worked in eye care for the last 40 years, including uh, Danida. And we are also uh, stimulating young uh, students like Anya, who's helping us to write our uh, newsletter. We have just signed up a uh, uh, MOU with the Bombay Municipal Corporation to do this, where we use the Remedio camera. And then we also signed up in a MOU, the Rotary Club, to do the screening for diabetic retinopathy. And we also do high school camp. We don't detect diabetes there. The idea my father told when he was alive is you have to teach the, the school children about diabetes and diabetic eye problem just to tell them that their grandparents may have diabetes and if they have, to have checkup. And so I always say, join the army, dream, make a dream, a blind free India. So we have a, there's a blind free India called the Diabetic Retinopathy Project in Mumbai slums, a diabetic cleaning program with Bombay Municipal Corporation and, and Rotary Club. So we are also trying several low cost training devices, which can be used in primary eye care centers, physician, anywhere. So one of them is using the slit lamp and using the uh, an attachment or a regular, this is a, Visucam, which is a several uh, uh, dollars, uh, which is um, in the big van. And we also have a camera called Forest made by in Bangalore. So we have several clinics like this in a slum, and we have created a five-star inside that building. The reason is every citizen deserves a, a thorough examination and treatment. And the, our social workers go door to door. As uh, uh, Calvin Pang mentioned, uh, six or seven million people live in slums, and we are we have covered three hundred thousand houses. We are visiting their door to door, and our social workers are using manually, but we are now converting into computers so that we can go back to the same house. We are also making a geo mapping along with the MIT Boston, so that when we go with the scanner or NFC, we can see what whether the how many diabetics are there what is the age group and also on, so on. So this is what we are doing. We are screening them in the wherever the place is available, doing the diabetic retinopathy at their checkup 
doorstep because they don't come even to the clinic. And uh, these are the screening camps you can see under the tree and sometimes in a marriage hall and sometimes in a temple and wherever it is available, we do. This is a mobile van carrying a heavy uh, instrument and uh, we, can, we are operating the, this all over Mumbai. And wherever the big van cannot go, we, I thought of uh, using the motorbike. That's the first of its project where we carried motor, the camera in the motorbike in 2014. And when I mentioned this to my friend in uh, 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 Brazil, uh, Dr. Rubens Belfort Sr., he told me, I want to use the same camera and he used it in the boat in the Amazon. And I'm happy you can see a video. This is taken about 10 years back. Uh, Aja, Aja, so we have now covered three lakhs. We have so we go door to door. Sometimes they don't open the door. So we did this knowledge, attitude, and practice of community and eye care providers. Like this is the camp where uh, we park the van and the uh, patient sit at the floor or in the stool. And uh, our people are doing diabetes check. And we also carry charts like this, both in English, Hindi, Marathi, local language, and uh, teach them. And this is, uh, as I said, 10 years back. Now we have covered. 100,000 diabetic patients and diabetic retinopathy patients. This is a Slumdog Millionaire song, which uh, even I approached the producers for giving us funding, but we could not uh, get. Our retina surgeon going and doing indirect ophthalmoscopy. And this is the only study in the world and study incidents and prevalence of diabetic retinopathy in urban slums. And that's the big van which uh, we carry all the equipments to study diabetic retinopathy, incidence and prevalence in urban slums of Mumbai. And inside the van also we have created, this van was uh, inaugurated by the former president of India, late Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. And this is how the photographs are taken inside the van. And this research will help reorient healthcare programs and formulate efficient eye care policies for the vulnerable population. And you see, you can see our uh, social workers are uh, uh, ma marking the uh, door. So where in case uh, there, there are some uh, floods or uh, 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 some uh, building collapses, but this is being done every door in the same uh, uh, narrow lane. The narrow lane is only one feet or two feet apart. And we have a record of uh, each uh, one and which we take it in the notebook and then come back and put it in the computer, which we want now donations for tablets so that they can use the electronic tablet, train them. And this is what they, they do the uh, blood test so that they know a random sugar. And if they are a diabetic and then, uh, then they do the PP sugar. So this is what we have put in the van also. And so you can see this is how the van goes all over uh, Mumbai. And he's a boy who's a school dropout who can do the Pandas photography, he can do better than a retina fellow. And it's not uh, to degrade others. The idea is I trained anybody so to do this uh, retina photograph because we need, how do we cover 100 million people with only 25,000 ophthalmologists and maybe 30,000 optometrists? So we don't need ophthalmologists. We don't need uh, uh, optometrists or technicians to do the retina photography. We can train anybody to do this uh, 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 initial examination and retina photograph and they are now doing the refractometer, they are filling up and then also doing refraction. And then uh, we also have an, another NGO who supports us for giving glasses because half the people don't wear glass so they can't. And this is a optimate camera. This lady refused to come out, had 400 sugar. And I said, uh, we'll go to her house and do. So sometimes I myself go, the reason is, uh, uh, but nobody knows me there and I love serving the people.
and uh, you can see the, we also created a Guinness record again not for the record so that we can make somebody break this record the reason is we we screened 649 uh, uh, people in eight hours and that's how they can other if somebody breaks this they will screen more people create more awareness and then we also have a ngo called uh, this is in my court called the roti bank where we serve uh, 12000 uh, meals free meals uh, to poor people we also have a young team who have done their hunger map the reason is we also gave free diabetic diet to 2,000 people, and we did awareness for all the 2,000 people, and we uh, included 649 patients for the Guinness record. And uh, we we do this regularly, daily in Mumbai, thanks to my team. We have a manager, Joseph, and uh, my secretary, Shubha, who coordinates with all. They, they have a pre-camp awareness. Uh, an army of people are working with me, and I'm only going around the world. Assembly of Diabetics capturing of images and uploading, diagnosis by ophthalmologist, AI, or image graders. And we also want to integrate with the National Health Mission, which is under the National Program for Control of Blindness in India. The health is a state uh, program, and we are. I'm still working with all. I'm trying to do advocacy because that's what I learned in the leadership development program from American Academy of Ophthalmology. We have several uh, funders on phone camera available. As I said, I don't have any financial interest. This is one of the funders on phone compared with the size. You can see the photographs are similar, maybe slight quality difference, but I think we can use the same image and do AI. And this is what uh, we have worked with a company called Medios, where you can see uh, offline AI. This is the first offline AI project in the world where this blue color detects the abnormal color with a mild proliferative and mild NPDR. This is a moderate NPDR with CSME. The C, the B is the severe P NPDR with CSME, and the D is the PDR with the CSME. All this, the offline AI can pick up. What is offline AI? There they stored images in the mobile itself. So there's no need for uh, uh, charging so we can or no need for internet and that's where we are successful maybe we are having a as of now a good product compared to the google and uh, microsoft i don't have any uh, competition but i my idea every poor person who doesn't have uh, money we should do a free service and we are trying to make a link between medically underserved area and tertiary health care and i think uh, we always believe in our philosophy spiritually what did we bring when we are born and what are we going to take it up when we go so this is our first uh, use of offline ai prediction of diabetic retinopathy using a funders on phone and uh, you can see um, so this is how the boy can take a photograph you can see the clarity of the photograph he can make a focus and then he can put it on the ai software which will say you can he selected the photographs this is a media software which will tell that uh, then it's a 99 percent confident that means the photograph is good and it also gives a report that blue color which picks up the abnormal color will say which patient has to go to an ophthalmologist and which patient can go home that means that there's no need for any uh, learned person who's a school dropout who doesn't know English but knows to operate a mobile phone can do that but uh, he only need an interest and we can do can give a training for three weeks and this is what the research we did the sensitivity and specificity of AI in detecting referable diabetic retinopathy was 100 percent and 88.4 percent respectively compact ophthalmologist grading and no false negative the sensitivity and specificity of the offline AI in detecting any diabetic retinopathy was 80 5.2 percent and 92 percent respectively compared to an ophthalmologist grading we also work with diabetologists endocrinologists and keep publishing and along with this dr kiran shah we did a diamond study and diabetic retinopathy awareness and association with multiple comorbidities insights from the diamond study and in that he said that 60 percent of them do not know the diabetes can produce uh, blindness and that's a pity so my our recommendation, early detection and treatment after screening can reduce the prevalence of diabetic retinopathy, even in remote areas in India, and where uh, even may, may, maybe the cars cannot reach or the bus, but we can go by the motorbike and they can go door to door and do this. Reduction in economic burden among poor and illiterate people, an opportunity for a, an, a, an, a, an a school dropout, 
with a non-skilled person who can give the skill and make him a semi-skilled person and work for healthcare and it will help to improve overall health of the population. If it is successful, I will want to extend this to South America, Central America and Africa. I'm trying to work on it all the places I go all over. And uh, this is one of the uh, 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 company called the PhD Media published this, the closing gap merge between technology and us. The next three decades will be the most technologically disruptive era in human history. Advances in AI combined with radical breakthroughs in hardware will usher in an era that sounds like science fiction today. Devices will fade away, virtual environments will emerge, and super smart AI assistants will organize our lives and run our businesses. That means uh, screening. In the new world, our relationship with technology will change forever. We will both virtually and biologically merge together. There is a science fiction movie in uh, uh, India where it was uh, called The Robot and where the robot is trying to produce a child. And that's what is the science fiction. But I think we hope to use this, the offline AI, where we have an image capturing done by a non-specialist, analysis of the images and sensitivity can be done. And the first uh, FDA approved system is IDX DR system, which is uh, almost uh, eight times the cost of this. And also per image is expensive for India. But in, uh, I think uh, Dr. Michael Abrams has done a phenomenal job of doing this, but you need a, a regular fundus camera. And this is what uh, is uh, sensitivity and specificity. And then a uh, Wisconsin uh, uh, AI study. And then also we have the Forest, which is another company from uh, Bangalore. And uh, ours uh, is uh, the first uh, offline AI for screening in the world. We use semi-skilled health workers, whatever I mentioned, in the Municipal Corporation of Greater Mumbai dispensary by our foundation. And the pilot study, we did 231 out of 255 patients in the field trial. Average diabetic duration was 5.5 years and patients with no diabetic retinopathy, 187, according to ophthalmologists. And AI found 172 patients with no diabetic retinopathy, which means 8% were overdiagnosed by AI. And this is the AI versus ophthalmologist. Sensitivity was 100%. And this was published in JAMA, Diagnostic Accuracy of Diabetic Retinopathy, screening with offline AI on a smartphone. And that particular month in 2019, we had 4,904 views and most viewed in that 30 days and most cited in three years. And this is a publication. I hope uh, all of you can go through it. Uh, ranked number five in the JAMA. And uh, the, what happened to the poor images? The reliability rule of non-diabetic retinopathy case drops to 81.9%. But referable diabetic retinopathy were still correctly marked as referable diabetic retinopathy with 100% reliability. And this is what uh, you can see there, the sensitivity and specificity. And uh, reliability of AI for screening population with diabetic retinopathy in, uh, is a need of ophthalmic checkup by an eye doctor is 100%. And that's what we found in this study. And the uh, advantage of using AI, more job opportunities, more working hands, skill development, and that's the only way to reach every village. We have, unfortunately, 647,000 villages, which is remote, and we have to reach them. An early refer re re referable diabetic retinopathy and greater awareness about diabetes, its effects, and importance of regular follow-up greater share time to the ophthalmologist to manage the referable diabetic retinopathy, timely medical surgical intervention, which I shared to prevent complete loss of vision or to restore vision. And we can also do all this grading. And now the same company has come out using the uh, AI and we can detect glaucoma, ARMD and diabetic retinopathy. There's the Google's uh, initiative, Google's DeepMind is working. And uh, as I said, the key benefits in diabetic retinopathy, the social economic dimension, early det detection, enabling the specialist to focus on treatment, deep learning techniques, continuously improve outcomes, relatively lower cost, highly scalable process with quick response time to manage because we are few ophthalmologists. We can't make so many machines, uh, so many ophthalmologists every year. And uh, the, we want to extend this uh, stop blindness program through uh, various programs like Government of India, State Societies, Rotary, Lions, IMA, Association of Physicians of India. So when there was a, we have this uh, religious congre congregation where millions of people uh, congregate in the along the rivers in India. This is one of them in the um, 
uh, in the Ganges and you can see people go. So I, th this, I did it in uh, 2019 with the local U U uh, Uttar Pradesh State of Talmic Society, Professor Kamaljeet and Dr. Manish Tandon. And uh, recently, the Professor uh, Shobha Shoprasad, my friend, and we worked on with the 20 institutes in India called Ornate India. And later she worked with the NIH NHS in uh, Singapore, in uh, United Kingdom and Kerala, and they got uh, this uh, Kerala government to do this. Similar thing I want to do for uh, Mumbai. And they took this in Thiruvannamudapuram in Kerala. Initially, the NHS uh, funded a 16 family health centers as a collaborative project. Similar projects can be done with the Hong Kong. And uh, there they had the contributors of Remedio the family health centers, district hospital, tertiary care hospital, and retina specialists. And this is the blueprint where they had a NCD, 16 family health center, 80 family health staff trained by the company, 4,500 patients screened, retinal image via the Remedio funders on phone, image transferred to the PC system, and retina pressure used for managing no retinopathy once a year, mild retinopathy once a year for follow-up, severe and moderate, where this is referred to the district hospital, tertiary care later for VR surgery. And in this also we found some 10% uh, of the patients are not willing because they say, my vision is good, why should I go to a VR surgeon? It's a challenge in India. This is a publication which is there in I think uh, PLOS, where one in three patients with diabetes uh, detected with diabetic retinopathy, 8.3% referred to secondary or tertiary care, 38% of patients detected with diabetic retinopathy were in the 41 to 60 years of group. 99% of the patients were unaware that they had diabetic retinopathy. It costs only about uh, um, 400 rupees is uh, 85 dollars a patient and uh, something like 200 family health centers were done. The glimpses, this is what we are doing in the Mumbai. Our boy is using the Remedio on the sound phone and we have done a pilot study with the 5,000 patients and nurses, uh, healthcare with no prior experience were used. Offline AI was used. Study done and peer reviewed clinical publication in JAMA. And then uh, so this uh, is, uh, we also, I am now, since I finished my president of All India and also Vitriot on Society, so I decided something to do my homework for my next uh, 35 years of, uh, if at all I live, I'm uh, 66 now. And if I live, I want to do this, not for profit organization formed under like a 501 in US, in India, it's called the Section 8 company to make India blind free and eliminate diabetic related eye ailment as the first thing in India. And we have this founding directors and uh, uh, my secretaries. The future plan is to uh, make sure that uh, extending this Kerala success to Bombay and all over India and where we can use the same photo funders camera and do three diseases, glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, and ARMD. And this is what they did in Kerala, and which uh, this is the Kerala uh, program, which I borrowed from them, thanks to many of my colleagues who have given these uh, photographs. And uh, this is our own clinics. And then, uh, uh, so, so I coined this term called anybody can screen diabetic retinopathy. Anybody means anybody who's interested, who's willing to learn. We are ready to train. I'm trying to initiate NGOs all over India to do this training so that I don't have to go. And sitting in one place, we can congregate and make sure everybody gets their due uh, recognition and also uh, make sure we follow the rules of a AI, rules uh, rules of the retina photographs uh, identity because we can have some problems. So we want to follow the law and make sure some remote, uh, remotely located patient will be diagnosed and treated. And uh, as a doctor, I this is my philosophy. I I am very spiritual, so I always want my patient to be happy. So I always uh, may use this mantra. I call it a uh, word. I tell patients should, should think of what they want: perfect vision and attract more of the same. And I follow this law of attraction, law of visualization, and law of uh, um, uh, law of what uh, uh, happening. So I follow this perseverance, perfection, patience prayer and precision. And I'm thankful to Dr. Peter Wiedemann who actually published this as a 5P and also the sixth one as a prayer. And I think I love, I tell the patient, we believe God and we, are, we have to do the duty. And I follow this man called uh, the Saint uh, Swami Vivekananda. He says, they alone live who live for others 
and the rest who are working for themselves are uh, selfish and they are like a dead corpse walking. Thank you very much.